Okay, so where did the idea for the play come from first? Well, um, I, I was interested, I've always been interested in uh, the supernatural, and I'm also interested in um, psychology. And I, I, I read um, recently uh, Henry James's novella, The Turn of the Screw, and uh, it's a wonderful um, book, uh, which I would highly recommend. And it can be read in uh, two ways. It can be read primarily as a ghost story, and it works absolutely uh, in that way. But it can also be read as um, a, a study, a psychological study of um, paranoia and repression. And also, I think, uh, if you know that, then there's a, a wonderful disquiet that develops because as you're reading it, you're thinking, is it psychological? Is there a ghost? Isn't there? And that unease about how to understand the text is also um, upsetting. So um, that, really, that really motivated me. I was also very interested in, um, I'm always interested in people uh, that stuck together in, in, a, in claustrophobic situations and uh, love a documentary made in 1976 uh, called Grey Gardens about a very dysfunctional uh, mother and daughter who live in the ruin of a house in East Hampton. And um, uh, the way they uh, love and also torture each other in equal measure is very uh, exciting to watch. So I was interested in that. Um, How are rehearsals going? How have they affected or brought the play to life? Okay. Um, being, first of all, being included in the, uh, the rehearsal process has been wonderful. And, I would, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the director, Wills <laughs> Wilson. Um, I would say this even if she was not here, for um, allowing me to be present at auditions and uh, rehearsals. Um, it's, it feels like a wonderful opportunity to learn more about um, how plays progress and also you know, to develop myself as a playwright. You know, it's, been, it's been terrific. And, um, I love I, I love the way um, the, the work has been workshopped and the actors have brought to it their own you know unique understanding and physicality and movement and gesture and how they've explored the character and how Wills has given them room to do that and also I feel very um, Please, the script has given them room to do that. Um, and it's very, very exciting for a writer to walk into uh, a, a situation where uh, half a dozen or more people are beavering away at an idea that started in your head. Um, that's thrilling. And not only beavering away, but adding their own creativity to it. And, pulling and pushing it in ways that I could not have anticipated, but which delight me. So it's been a great, it's been a great time. For me as a director, it's just a great um, luxury and um, a great help to have a writer who's in rehearsals. So, um, or, or in the whole process. So what's been very, um, every stage is that Margaret and I have um, really worked together from before the play was written. The play was a synopsis when we started working together. Mm -hmm. quite a, and then a, a, quite a full synopsis, quite a well-developed synopsis, and then first draft, second draft. So I think we're on about, I'm not quite sure how many now, but it's gone through a number of drafts and changed in quite a lot of um, quite significant ways. The characters have always been very um, consistent but what they did has mm -hmm. changed quite a mm -hmm. bit, hasn't it? Uh, but the fact that we were able to do that together means that we have a very shared understanding, mm -hmm. I think, of what, mm -hmm. um, of who they are. And, it, uh, and then going into auditions helped that enormously because we were able to hear a bit of the play, we were able to hear the play and um, see different ways that we could go with the characters 
particularly Eusapia, who's the older woman, um, who in reality is probably in her 70s. And we auditioned quite a lot of actresses of that age. Um, and then came up a bit of a, up against a bit of a brick wall. It just didn't feel we'd found the right person. We hadn't found the right style. And then we had a great audition day in, in London. We decided we'd just throw the doors open to any ideas that had been lurking in our heads and admit all our wildest ideas to each other. So we had a day of auditions where we auditioned men and younger women and older women, older men, younger men as a whole. They looked like a company of actors who were about to start a play. They didn't look like a company of actors who were for auditioning for the part. same part. They were looking at each other going, mm -hmm. is he here for the same part as me? Um, and uh, what that did was raise the stakes in terms of the theatricality of the language. It really helped us get the right language for the play, that it had to be um, theatrical, not naturalistic. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think it's meant that before rehearsals, we'd already done a lot of the thinking that would possibly usually happen within the first couple of weeks of rehearsals. Uh, I'm Joanna Holden, and uh, I'm up in Newcastle playing Eusapia, who was described when I first got the casting details as a formidable housekeeper in Queen Bee. And um, so, um, obviously, you are a young woman. I am. Well, and... not as young as I was, but <laughs> I guess none of us are. Yes. Um, and I understand that um, Eusapia is um, actually a 70-year-old wo woman in the play. Yes. Um, so how are you approaching that? What's, what, what's all that about? Well, it's very interesting, actually, because the more we've delved into the play, it is as if this figure, Eusapia, can, is, is quite a mercurial figure. So at some point she can be like a young girl, or she can be like an old woman, or she can have a limp. And, and in the script, actually, she does kind of come on every now and again for sympathy in, uh, with her arm in a sling or uh, her knee bandaged up. So she is quite, she's an extremely odd character. And of course also as well, you know, a 70-year-old lady can be very, very sprightly. And, and also that's quite interesting actually not to always, I guess, play somebody bent over like this in, with a stick. So we're kind of playing with, with she constantly reinvents herself or, or morphs into all shapes but not sizes I guess because it'd be quite difficult. What's happening in the seance? Sometimes uh, it feels like there's um, a pull between uh, physical theatre and text-based, and we seem to have found ourselves in a situation where they're working together really mm -hmm. nicely. I've been overwhelmed by um, the interpretation of the situation and the characters in a physical way. It's, it's added a great depth and breadth to the script, but also there's been so much um, attention to the text, and the text is also enormously important and, and we haven't seemed to have, have needed to you know sacrifice one for another so I think that's groundbreaking 